<laughs> so you got this new album dropping on April 7th. It's called The Invitation, A Conversation with God. And you did start the album off with a conversation that kind of sets the tone for the album. Now, is that how you went into recording mode or how did you know what direction you wanted to go with your project? I just went from my heart. You know, there were times when I was um, just going through certain situations, even while filming. And I would just come to the studio and just let it all out. You know, that was my therapy session, if you okay. would. Um, so there was no particular order or anything like that. I just went in with an open mind, knowing that this is what I wanted to do and this is how I wanted to convey my truth. And while doing so, um, it just worked out, man. Because now even when I hear the songs, I'm like, oh, that got me through that. You know, <laughs> oh, when I listen to that, it's like, oh, I remember where I was. So and I just hope that when people hear the album and all these records that they too can, you know, it's relatable and they can get through. Because I think music is supposed to do that anyway. It's supposed to evoke like emotion where it's take you up high, make you smile or cry and get you through. Right. But now, it, where, wasn't, it wasn't intentional like that. I just saying, you know, for my Got heart. you. Now, uh, you mentioned that this was recorded during a very rough, rough, tumultuous season of your life, basically. <laughs> now, um, as you were get it like laying the blueprint for the album like where was the i guess the stress of life coming from because were you recording this album at the same time are you recording the show or was it something yes. else that you were going through okay so it was, bas oh, was basically it was, everything was happening in real time um and so you know going back i said okay we i'll do this i didn't want to do this show i didn't want to do it it was so many things that were i had a reservations you know, and I always say when I have reservations, I like to pray about it, but I didn't, I tried to pray about it. And my, I talked to my sister. She was like, well, look, this would be a good idea. You know, we want to do music outside of the group. Um, we want to be able to put our cookbooks out. So she started to, you know, talk to me about what that would look like. And I said, okay, okay. And I was like, as long as we're doing it together, we're talking about positive things. And then two, we're talking about two super groups. Mm -hmm. That's the, you get an escape. You know, it's like, wow, y'all talking about a tour. People don't get this in this industry. They don't. 30 years in the game, and we've been through a lot, all of us. And mm -hmm. to have weathered that storm, I'm like, let's do it. And then as we started to film, it started to spiral out of control. It was not about the music. And I do remember Tiny saying that, you know, I'll say this. She was like, if Mona Scott wants to do this show, she's going to destroy us. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, you said some powerful things because now look at how everything has transpired. Everybody's beefing, yes. people on IG going back and forth. Me and my sister, were, we're at odds now. She wants to call and, you know, apologize to my mom. And she, she told my mom yesterday she just wants her family back. She's sorry that this even happened. Mm -hmm. So it's that whirlwind. And now I got to go out and defend a lie. So every day, uh, it was that. I did not want this to be that. I think the fans, I feel so bad because... The fans want to hear music. They don't care about the banter. They they want right. to hear us and see us in the light that they remember. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to keep the legacy going, but we don't know what's happening at this point. They're, they're still editing and stuff. And it's crazy because the first thing that I shot with my mom and my sister was the very first scene. They put flash forward three days ago. There was never three days before. Because okay. the first scene was the scene with my mom and my sister. So when guys, everybody's seeing me in these scenes, I'm upset because because me and my sister are at odds. It had nothing to do with anybody else. So those type of things are happening. And I'm just like, Lord, what is going on? It is insane. Now, what's been harder for you being open and transparent in your music or being open and transparent on reality TV? Um, It's not it's not hard for me to be transparent in the music because, it, like I said, it comes from my heart. And I think with me having that transparency, there's so many other people that... Um, will get what they need out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. On TV is a different thing, especially when people are acting out and they're lying. Because you have to defend the lie, then you got to go around and people judge And then people will ask you why you want to do gospel music, when in all actuality, I started in the church. I started singing gospel music, then I came to R&B, and now I'm going back home. So for people mm -hmm. to point the finger like, oh, you're just trying to go to gospel music because you're out here stealing it. I didn't steal money from my sister. Don't believe everything you see on television. Things, okay. when I tell y'all that it's some stuff in the scenes that have been edited out, and I'm like, oh my God, that, that's how we were able to talk about our differences. Like, there's a mm -hmm. episode that is taking place that I actually addressed every issue that I had with the girls. Every issue. But conveniently mm -hmm. disappeared, and you don't even see the resolve. So it's like, what did we do this for? If y'all gonna control right. the narrative, 
and make people look at us, you know, like this is not what it was supposed to be. And gotcha. I have to apologize to the fans. I, I feel like we have really just bamboozled them. And I say <laughs> we because I have to take ownership because I'm on the show as well. Right. So it's not it's just not a good look. Yeah, it's been stressful. I will say, as a fan, it's been stressful because, one, I like to see our people, especially our groups, our icons, having a great time together. And when we're we're uh, seeing, I guess, the ugly side of what relationships can be, it yeah. just really, I don't want to say it takes away from the legacy, but it kind of hurts the image that we've painted yes. uh, watching you guys. You know what I'm saying? And I know being a gospel artist carries the burden of being, like, perfect, right? So yeah. with that happening and then with the show trying to show ugly sides to your personality or create ugly sides, as you may say, to your personality, how do you feel that uh, helps or hinders the message that you're trying to get out with your music? You know, people have um, that thing where they, they judge you first off before they even know you. So it's very hard when you're trying to promote music because people have already determined in their mind, oh, she did it, or I don't like the way she looks in the scenes. She looks like a mean girl. And not considering the fact that you probably don't even know prior to me filming something has happened, or while I'm in scene, something is going on. So it, it's, it's very difficult. It really is. And okay. I don't want anybody to judge me. I mean, you know me. Like that is not you. What has happened? The fan appreciate even that because they're trying to paint me out to be this old me. Know that I'm positive, you know, and I preach that every day. Like I don't even negative. I don't hang around it. It can't do anything for me. I can't pay a bill with it. I can't help nobody with it, so they can keep it. And, you right. Know, and with, with the way I the way I move and the way I rock in this industry, I've never been accused of being a thief. I've never been shunned upon making it seem like I'm the diva. I want to be Beyonce. The names like uh, what they say, Gladys Knight and the Pips and Diana Ross and the Supremes. It's like, come on, guys. Right. Right. Really? Right. Now, what has taught you the most personal lessons, taping the show or recording the album? Because you've been in the game for a minute, but I know it's a different era and it's a different time where we're using these tools to kind of promote the music and the image or whatever. But with all these new additions, I guess, <laughs> all this access we have to our favorite artists, like what has taught you the most personal lessons? Um, the most personal lessons is... First of all, to trust God and not man. Okay. A lot of times we tell people our secrets or we think that they're happy for us and, and our success, but a lot of people like to see you down. They like the fact that they're, you, you're not doing more than them. Um, but one of the lessons that I've learned is to trust my gut, to trust my instinct and continue to walk in my truth. That's all I can do. I can't sit here and um, make up stuff. I'm not a reality liar. <laughs> I'm not a reality show person that walks around thinking that I'm all of that. Mm -hmm. I honestly did not want to do it. Okay. I, you know, I should have stuck to my guns. I should have said, no, I'll, I'll sit this one out. Um, but listen to the, listen to your heart. Walk in okay. the truth. Okay. Well, let's talk about Miss May Girl Music here because uh, not only is it your label, you're the first artist to release on the label and it is your label. What kind of pressure is that? Um, I'll say it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of moving parts, but I'm learning as I go. Um, but then, too, I've been a student of the game. So I know I understand what it is to work. I understand the grind. I understand putting in those hours in the studio and writing songs. But, you know, back in the day, I would write songs all the time, and I would give the group credit. It at times and then sometimes I wouldn't now I've taken all of that and it's been a lesson for me I don't like to act like I'm a victim I just learn a lesson through all the tests that God you know presents or the world presents to me and um, one of the lessons I've taken is ownership you know okay. I don't want anybody to have ownership over me so I own my masters I thank God for that so when you hear Tasha ain't nobody taking none of my money you okay know, in the game and I understand what that is too because as a female in this industry you know sometimes we've had to take a back seat even when we are just as great as our counterparts. So I've, I've learned in that regard to where, okay, my voice is finally being heard, finding myself. And I also want to be a light to other people to let them understand just because you want to do a record, right? Or you you go into the studio, there's so much 
so many different things. You got to worry about splits. You got to make sure that when you come, that there's so much that I want to be able to teach people. And I couldn't do that until I went through it. So mm-hmm. it's now that I've gone through it, I'm a light. I am an instructor. I have my PhD in this industry <laughs> and I can help anybody else. When I tell you, come see me. Okay. Running a label, <laughs> running a label, producing the record, arranging the record, all of that. So shout out and congratulations on that. Thank I'm going to tell you. you two of my favorite songs on this album because thanks okay, to Motown. I got to, I got to listen to a little, a little preview here. Afraid, 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 afraid. I love yes. afraid. Uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, thoughts or what was the inspiration behind I'm a, um, Afraid? Um, I began to have trust issues after everything that went down. And it's like, I just don't trust people. I don't. And I had to go to God and, you know, I asked him and I, and I wrote my feelings about how I felt about each and every encounter that I had. And it's just like, I'm afraid to trust again. If you can, just hold my hand because I still want you. So don't you move. Because mm-hmm. I can't do this by myself. And I even you. went on to talk about the relationship with my sister. And I, if I don't have that love that I give from her or my family, God, I need you. Because mm-hmm. there's no other love, greater love than his. And so I had to learn to rely on that. That was my strength. And then this song, I, I, when I tell you, I poured my heart. And that's why when you said afraid, I'm doing this. <laughs> that's, my, that's my favorite song because I was able to really tap into something else. And I can't wait. When I tell you, I can't wait for people to hear this whole album. Okay. It's going to be it's gonna be something. I just want to touch some lives. Okay. Well, let's talk about I'm Yours because that's a, my second that's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, the other, that's, the that's my other favorite i was just okay, like you know what and i was trying to debate which one was my top definitely afraid is my top but i'm okay. yours is a very close favorite here and when you put that one together i kind of I, of course i get the story behind it but that seems like you really was in a place um during that time what was going through your your mind when you did that particular song and were you more um did you bring it harder on paper, so to speak, or did you bring it harder in the booth? Um, I brought it harder in, on paper and in the booth. On both. Yeah, that was just my transparency with the most high to say, you know, I'm, I'm getting picked on by saying I want to do another genre of music. Okay. With the gift that you've given me, I'll be doing you a disservice by not doing it. You know, okay. when you think about the Aretha Franklins and, and the Whitney Houstons and the the Ray Charles, they were able to transcend just one genre of music. And I don't put me in no box. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. And so I I went, it's like, I'm yours. Like, I belong to you. This gift, I didn't get to myself. So I have to use it. It's supposed to be given. You don't hold on to a gift. But I, I'm letting the world know that it doesn't matter what you say. I belong to him, to God. That's okay. It. That's as transparent as I could be. Okay. Well, I'm loving it. Well, I will say, again, wholeheartedly, I'm hoping that what we're seeing on TV does not affect the messages that you're wanting to get out through this album, because after probably the first episode, I think before I even saw the episode, I was just like, this is not going to be a good look for Tasha, because I know what you're trying to yeah. do. And yeah. it, like I said, as a fan, it definitely concerned me. And I'm just wanting... I'm hoping we get to the other side of this, basically, because we, we're we just halfway there. We're just halfway through the season, and I'm sure there's more that's coming. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a lot more coming, but I don't think that God would bring me this far. You know, I'm I'm from College Park. Okay. Everybody said that I wasn't going to make it. Me and my sister were not going to make it from where we were from. You know, they were like, you need to go get a job. It's not going to happen for you. Mm-hmm. But I never thought about that. I always felt like, you know, whatever it was was in my heart, I went for. So mm-hmm. I know that if God brought me through that and I'm sitting here talking to you and we're talking about 30 years later, that this is nothing for God to bring me through. Um, But when you're doing something for him, he will not leave or forsake you. So yeah, I'm going through this right now. It's valleys. Okay. You know, once I reach, yeah, I I got to Then I'm going to have another story to tell. How you can make it through any situation. So that's just what it is. Everything is not going to be perfect. But, you know, I don't ask God to prevent the fight. I just ask him to provide the faith. Gotcha. And that's it. Okay, well, one more question pertaining to the show, because I know this, I've seen this on Twitter, so I just want to give you that chance to clear that up or whatever. Uh, as far as the group, we, we do understand that you're still in the group, but as far as you doing the solo when the group was getting like a second coming, was there any particular reason why you didn't use the hiatus from the group to embark on the solo journey, or was there 
was there a, a particular reason that now is the time that you're doing solo versus why the group was on break? Um, once I tried to do the solo deal with Jermaine on So So Deaf early on, and um, there was so much resistance from my group, and they were upset because Jermaine was like, yeah, let her do it. You know, you guys can do soundtracks. I'll make sure that you guys are good financially. So when I got that resistance, and then all of a sudden, I didn't get my album to come out for some reason. I don't know what that was about, but, you know, of course, Candy got her album out which is cool. I just, my thing was, why didn't I get mine when I was the one who initially, you know, Jermaine was like, she should be able to do music. So after that, I was depressed, you know, okay. although I did, you know, when I would see them, I would congratulate them on all their success. I even called Tiny when they won the Grammys. I felt like we all won the Grammy, you know, I was like, wow, that's my girl. And even I told her at that time, Candy and I weren't speaking, but just tell her I said, congratulations. And she did. Mm -hmm. And then with Candy, we started to um, talk more. You know, and I was like, listen, I was there for her when she had the Essence magazine uh, cover shoot. I okay. went to her plays. Yeah, I was there for her plays. And then I even went to Broadway. She did a Broadway show. She told us, hey, I don't want to do any more shows with you guys, but I'm going to go to Broadway. And I felt like even in that area, that's what she wanted to do. So I wanted to support her. But for some reason, the love is never reciprocated for me. So, of course, there's a, a feeling that y'all don't want me to make it or it's something about me when I say I'm going to do something, but whatever, I don't know what that is. So I, yeah, I was depressed and I didn't, I didn't move forward. I just, I was stagnant for a while and I just raised my son and I questioned why am I in this predicament when I was the one that wanted to sing. All I ever wanted to do was sing. That's it. So it, it did play, it had a toll, it took a toll on me to be honest. Um, okay. And I just kind of went off the scene for a while. And then, um, we got the call. Well, I got the call that somebody was trying to take our our autobiography, like our bio, and um, our biopic. And we were like, oh, no. And the group came together, and we tried to stop that. And as we we're trying to stop that, everybody goes, so is the skate back together? And things just started <laughs> to, to work, yeah. My husband okay. said, hey, you guys need to do a tour. And we ended up doing a tour. And we made a, you know, we made a lot of money and we kept moving, you know, we did okay. TV shows and so things started to pick up for us and now we're here. Okay. Well, I'm thankful for uh, getting that from your mouth because, you know, we, we do take what we see and what we hear kind of piece our own yeah. <laughs> stories together I sometimes. Know. I so know. I like to definitely like, like to, you know, give the artists the opportunity to clear that up. And I feel like if I can tweet and I can Facebook and I can do all that stuff and have opinions, you know, I don't want to get in front of you because again, I love and respect you too, but I don't want to get in front of you and act like I haven't tweeted <laughs> right. or Facebook right. or whatever, but I like to, yeah. you know, try to get some of those answers. But I'm telling you, uh, like I said, I have played the album, very solid project. And, you, you know, I got my favorites on there. So I'm wishing you much success with it. And I'm hope, like I said, I'm hoping that the drama doesn't overshadow the message that you're trying to get out. And we just hope that we get, you know, as the fans and as the group too, that we get further along. And like you said, get over the the, the hump and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get it together, you know? Yeah, and it's unfortunate because when you think about the legacy of Escape as well as SWV, I never want the fans to see the back and forth. Like I said, the banter, that's not what we're here for. I feel, you know, slighted in a way because of how editing has been done. And I mm -hmm. also feel a way because you don't get this far in the industry to have that tarnished by a TV show and to have people judge you because of what they think they see. But all I can do is continue to walk in my truth and live the way that I know God has allowed me to live and shine light on things and, and just speak my truth because I've been quiet for a minute. And that's why people don't know. They think it's like I'm hiding. I'm not. I'm trying to make sure that the words that come out are the right words and not I'm not leaning on my understanding is I needed to hear from God. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, no, I'm going to walk in my truth. I apologize so much to the fans because y'all don't deserve this. This is not what y'all, y'all probably look like, what is happening? And same way I'm looking like a lot of things I'm learning <laughs> when y'all right. learning it. Right. So, but I apologize and I pray that one day we, we find a resolve and we all get back on that stage and do what God has blessed us to do because we blessed to be 30 years. People don't even get here. Yeah, we are arguing about who go first in the song, who, <laughs> who, you know, what I'm saying who co headline, and it's like, what are we doing? Yes, I totally it's, feel it's it. It's bigger than that. It's so much bigger than that, and I just hope that people look beneath the surface and know that everything you see is not real on television. All right. 
Well, April 7th. <laughs> April 7th, Friday. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we're going to be looking at it for it. Tasha, I do appreciate you taking the time to holler at me today. I know it's probably hard to do press right now. <laughs> it is, but, I, but, but guess what? I don't shun from it. I ain't got nothing to hide. So let's talk about it. You know, let's and talk so, about yeah, it. I, I appreciate the platform that you have to allow my voice to be heard. And, and thank you to the fans who have supported us, man. And for you, too, because you've been rocking with us for a while, too. Day so one. Thank you. <laughs> yes, day one. I thank you so much, babe. No problem. You have a great day, okay? You do the same. All, All right. Bye-bye. Right.